host Caleb Lawrence and this is the Market Bull, October 23rd, 2020. The major averages closed another sloppy session mixed on little high frequency data today. Since Monday, the Standard & Poor's 500 index has lost 29 points or 0.83 percent, while the Nasdaq fell 184 points or 1.59 percent. With a number of economic data metrics hiccuping of late, including a few related to real estate, and a third consecutive quarter of double-digit earnings declines on tap on the way to a fourth, add rising COVID-19 cases, and doubts about the veracity of the economic recovery remain. Admittedly, considerable data strongly supports the quick quote-unquote V-shaped economic recovery narrative, but some of the data indicates significant structural economic damage as well. The AEI Weekly Index tracks people visiting shopping malls and other commercial establishments based on cell phone GPS data. This series has recovered a lot of the ground it lost earlier this year, but still has a long way to go, with traffic running from a high of 80% in Kansas City to a low of 45% in San Francisco. Open Table tracks seated diners at restaurants, and here again, while considerable improvement can be seen since the lockdowns were lifted in early May, dining out is a shadow of its former self, down 41%. Additionally, the number of restaurants taking reservations is down over 26% since the crisis started, with many restaurants shifting to a takeout-only model. Another huge change wrought by the virus, and one that is still being written, is the work-from-home trend. Castle Systems, a distributor of office security and access control systems for 3,600 buildings and some 41,000 businesses, reports that its top 10 metros have an office occupancy rate of between 43.3% in Dallas, Texas to just 14.7% in San Francisco, compared to pre-pandemic levels as of mid-October. But it is the painfully high number of folks collecting unemployment six-plus months into this crisis that is the real shocker. Now, this number is starting to decline steadily, not so much because people are finding work, but because the 26-week benefit period is being exhausted which is why Main Street America desperately needs a new round of stimulus, with virus cases on the march again bringing renewed economic shutdowns. California's recent shutdown of unemployment claims processing as the state scrambled to overcome a historic backlog only added to the considerable data chaos that has cast a cloud over the unemployment data in the post-crisis period. Despite sharp improvements in California's data, with the resumption of reporting, its unemployment figures remain alarmingly high, as do the nation's 31 weeks into the current crisis. Adding up the headline employment data with pandemic unemployment assistance figures and various state unemployment programs shows an unprecedented 23.15 million continuing unemployment claims as of mid-October, representing some 14.4% of the civilian labor force of 160.8 million. And while this is a dramatic improvement over the 32-odd billion continuing claims seen in June, or 20% of the labor force during the depths of the current crisis, this figure is the most damning critique of the quick, quote-unquote, V-shaped economic recovery narrative, along with the steady one-plus million seen still filing unemployment benefits each week, a figure far higher than the 770,000 peak initial claims seen during the last crisis. The Standard & Poor's 500 index closed today at 3,465.39, up 11.90, while the Nasdaq finished the day at 11,548.28, up 42.28. Gold ended trading at $1,903.40 an ounce, down $1.20. This is Caleb Lawrence, Registered Investment Advisor. If you would like to make an appointment, I can be reached directly at 831-334-5318 or through Microsoft Teams video conferencing at Caleb at clinvestments.com. You can also find me on social media, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Advisory services are offered through Caleb Lawrence, Registered Investment Advisor, Inc. And with that, you're up to date as we close the week.